Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media, and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. I'm going to do a series of probably three podcasts on soul ties, trauma bonds, and breaking unwanted attachments. So today is the first installment in this series. And I'm going to talk about what a soul tie is and the good things about it, the bad things about it, how to tell the difference. I would ask that if you're enjoying these principles that I've been sharing, would you consider picking up one of my books on Amazon? If you've been listening to my podcast, you know I have two devotional books, one called Sheep Hear His Voice and one called Insights into Faith, a workbook also called Life Without Baggage that will help you find greater emotional freedom and peace, a Bible study, and two books that will help you with personal coping and understanding distortions and understanding yourself. So consider picking up one of those for yourself or a friend. So let's get into today's episode. So someone brought up the question of what is a soul tie, and that got me thinking about uh, doing a couple of episodes on this. I realized I haven't really talked about this much. I do have a chapter in my book called Life Without Baggage. The podcast was actually named after the book, and there's a, a chapter on soul ties and attachments. So uh, today I'm going to be drawing a lot from that chapter and the next couple of weeks. And the things that I'm going to share with you are articles I've read, things in the Bible that I've studied, commentaries from Christian experts, and then also just different things I have done to pray with people over the years to figure out how to help people unyoke from these negative experiences, these toxic uh, relationships or situations. And you may have heard me use the term unyoke lately. That's been the word I've been using when I pray for people about these things. So let's talk about what a soul tie is. So if I define for you in a simple way, what is a soul tie? It's basically an attachment. It can be good or bad. It can be voluntary or involuntary, like a trauma bond. That would be an involuntary tie where you know you you're, you just are having trouble shaking that loose, a soul tie, but we can break these. So these are attachments. They're emotional connections that we have. They're a matter of degree. Some can be more intense. Others are less intense, easy to break, easy to get past. So I'm just trying to give you an overview here. Now, does this appear in the Bible? I would say it does. And here's a couple of reasons why. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1, it says that David and Jonathan, that their hearts were knit together. They were like brothers. They weren't brothers, but they were like brothers. They were one in the spirit, it says in the New International Version. Also, in Genesis 44, verse 30, it says that that same word, Jacob, what his heart was knit to his son, Benjamin. Benjamin was his favorite. So 
this word for knit together means to bind where you like would be tied to something like you might bind uh, pieces of wood together for a fire to bind fast. In other words, you know, it's firm. Like if, if uh, I want to mount my camera to something and I don't want it to fall off, then I'm going to bind it firmly. It can also mean conspire. So when you're conspiring, that's generally not thought of as a good thing. If you think of like organized crime, they bind, they take oaths to one another. So there's a binding in that sense that isn't good. So th these are less formal than a covenant. In a, a covenant, like when you get married or uh, in the Old Testament where you would make a covenant with uh, a leader, that, that's more formal. Whereas these attachments are more informal, but they're just as real. You could also think about it um, in the New Testament. It talks about really the sexual bond making us one flesh with another person. We think about it in marriage, but um, honestly speaking, if you have a sexual relationship with the person you're not married to, you may find it very difficult to break the bond that you have formed with them. So I would say there's a lot of evidence in the Bible that these kinds of, if you want to call it a soul tie, exists. If the one we have isn't good for us, or if something, for whatever reason, a divorce or a death, where you need to get over something. Sometimes it's useful to understand this because it, it can assist you in grieving or in getting over something that you need to get over. Now, what are the purposes of soul ties or attachments? Well, in a good situation, it binds us to another person. When it's not a good situation, like maybe some people, their child regardless of what their child is doing, you know, their child is 30 or 40. And uh, there's situations like this in the news all the time. And the parents are still bailing them out. I would say that that is not a good attachment, that that tie has is out of balance. And I would call that an idol, where that relationship controls you as opposed to it being a source of joy, a source of connection, a way of belonging, that it takes over in ways that aren't healthy and balanced. In a good way, we can be unified with other people. It gives us stability. It's, it's glue. Families should have some level of this. Hopefully, communities of faith have some level of this. So it provides stability for us. But it's bad when it is a blind loyalty, when we are controlled by what other people think of us, what other people want us to do, rather than being um, motivated by the Holy Spirit, who is supposed to help us guide our behavior and make decisions. So you can see that these are kind of, um, they're sort of judgment calls, but I find it really helpful to think about friendships, uh, dating relationships, uh, relationships with children, that it's helpful to think of, is there still glue that binds you to a person that you don't want to be bound to anymore? Or was there an involuntary event that occurred? And that's why maybe you're having trouble putting something in the past, maybe a trauma that occurred. That, that maybe you are connected. It, we can even be bound, I think, to institutions. Maybe you were in a church where you were traumatized or some other kind of organization. And there's still kind of this tie to that church or that organization. I find it useful to think about those situations as attachments, as soul ties, as trauma bonds. Now, I'm going to mention some other ways that I think these bonds are formed. I have this opinion based on a series of messages I heard. I tried to look them up to get you the name of the, the pastor, and I couldn't find it. 
But it does seem to me that when we worship consistently with another group, there is a unity, a knitting together that occurs. So that's a good thing. But when we are engaged in behavior that maybe it's part of a cult, it's still sort of a form of worship, but it's part of a cult or drug use. Uh, you think about people that are drinking buddies that um, when one person quits, they find it very, very difficult to stay away from that group of friends. So I don't think it's just the shared activity. I think that based on some messages that I've heard in the past, that when we worship with the group, and that includes rebellious behavior or sinful behavior that we engage in with the group, it seems as though we are bound in some fashion to some degree to those individuals on some kind of emotional, spiritual level that sometimes we might want to break through prayer. I do have a video posted on a prayer to break judgments and trauma bonds. I'll put a link to it with the uh, notes for this program, but I'm also going to pray something now that if this matches anything that you know you want to disconnect from, you can just fill in the names. So Lord, we thank you that you forgive us our sins, that you can unyoke us from people that we have become tied to through our sin, through bad decisions, through things that were done to us that we didn't want. I choose to forgive those people or individuals or organizations that did damage to me. Go ahead and name those people. I ask you to unyoke me, Lord, from those situations, those people, those places, in my thinking, in my emotions, even in my physical being, spiritually. I repent for any ways that I participated willingly in behavior or situations that are sinful. I ask you to forgive me if I had a contribution in any of this activity. I ask you, Lord, to fill the empty places that have been created from the distance that either they have chosen or through the loss or through decisions I was forced to make. I ask you to fill those empty places with yourself, with your Holy Spirit, that you would knit me back together as you intended me to be, fully alive in body, soul, and spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive, that you cleanse, that you restore. I ask you to help each listener to see what steps they need to take in order to continue to grow, to be fully alive in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this is Dr. Tony Cooper. Thanks for listening. This was part one on soul ties, trauma bonds, and unwanted attachments. So we'll talk more about this next time. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend.